Well, the police chief of the small town of Republic wants to be Washington's next governor. Chief Lauren Culp received national attention after he voiced his opposition to a state gun safety initiative. Crime Chief's Whitney Ward joins us now with more on his campaign. Whitney. Good afternoon, both of you. So that announcement came earlier today on a Facebook page supporting the police chief, and it included a link to Culp's campaign website. That site outlines key issues that he hopes to address, including addiction, mental health, smaller government, and support for veterans and police officers. Culp also suggests tougher punishments for drug dealers and criminals. Now, back in November, the police chief wanted to make Republic a Second Amendment sanctuary city after initiative 1639 passed said uh, Culp said that it would keep him from enforcing Washington's law and that says you have to be 21 to buy a semi-automatic rifle. Republic City Council later delayed that vote on the proposition. A kickoff party for his campaign is set for tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Republic City Park. Now this announcement seemed a little bit early, so we did look into the state's gubernatorial election process and from what we could find Culp is the only candidate who has announced so far. The filing deadline for that race is May 15th of 2020, so obviously still quite a bit of time. We also wanted to know if the current governor, Jay Inslee, could run again since he's currently running for president. And under state law, Inslee could only run for governor if he withdraws from the presidential race before May 15th of 2020. He cannot run for both offices at the same time. Mark, Jane. Whitney, thank you very much. In other news, things are improving in the four separate fires burning near Cheney. The complex fire has burned 171 acres. It's roughly 20% contained. Fire crews, though, expect to have those fires fully contained by tomorrow. Level one evacuations are in effect for people living south of State Route 904. All other evacuation orders have been lifted. With warmer temperatures and winds expected to pick up later tonight, fire crews will be surely keeping a close eye on this area to make sure that fire does not roar back to life. And the Timber Creek fire is still burning near Highway 2 in southern Ponderay County, four miles west of Diamond Lake. At last check, it was 35% contained and had burned four acres. The highway is still open. Right now, there are no evacuation orders in place for that fire. And unfortunately, winds are going to pick up tonight across the region. Thomas Patrick in for Tom Sherry tonight, tracking a red flag warning. Thomas? Yeah, and the red flag warning is for central Washington at this moment. That's for the winds starting to increase this evening. So that's the Ellensburg and the Yakima area in red here. But then Saturday comes along and then the winds pick up for the rest of the inland northwest. So that's the fire weather watch, which will likely get upgraded to a red flag warning by the time we get to Saturday morning. So that'll definitely be the windiest day of our forecast. Here's just another graphical uh, representation of that wind speeds. Just con the consistent speeds will be between about 10 and 20 miles per hour and then gusting into that 30 to 35 mile per hour range. As for today, a hot one across the area. 90 right now marking the high temperature for Spokane winds currently at about 9 to 10 miles per hour. So certainly not the strongest that we've seen recently. Though the hot spot in Pomeroy at 99 degrees right now. So coming up, a look at your weekend forecast and just how hot or dry the weather will be for the rest of, well, the rest of the month. That in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. Tracking some breaking news in the past 30 minutes, the U.S. Supreme Court is clearing the way for the Trump administration to tap into Pentagon funds to build sections of a border wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. That's according to the Associated Press. The president can now use those funds to begin work on four contracts. A trial court initially froze the funds in May, and an appeals court kept that freeze in place earlier this month. Well, now that the freeze is lifted, about $2.5 billion is available to start work on those sections of a border wall. There is growing pushback today against the Department of Justice's decision to resume the federal death penalty. Democratic leaders say they plan to introduce a bill today to abolish the death penalty. Attorney General William Barr says executions will resume in December. They will be the first federal execution since 2003. There have only been three executions since the federal death penalty was reinstated in 1988. And Barr ordered five men to be executed in December and January. The first is Danny Lee, who has strong ties to our area. Lee was convicted of killing an Arkansas family in 1996. It was part of a plot to set up a whites-only nation in the Pacific Northwest. Prosecutors say he also bombed Spokane City Hall in 1996 in a string of other violent crimes. 
That bomb at City Hall detonated, but it was overnight and no one was hurt. Lee is scheduled to die by lethal injection on December 9th. Convicted child killer and rapist Joseph Duncan is also on federal death row in Indiana. He will not be among the first five inmates to be executed. The man accused of shooting at federal agents during a drug raid in Moses Lake could face assault charges. A spokesman with the Grant County Sheriff's Office identified the suspect as 47 year old Patrick Pearson. Pearson has not been charged with anything yet since the investigation is still ongoing. But the spokesperson says he will likely be charged with first degree assault. Earlier this month, multiple federal agencies were conducting a large scale drug bust. During one of the operations, two ATF agents were injured when they say Pearson tried to shoot at them but shot himself instead. Pearson is still being treated for his injuries at Sacred Heart Medical Center. Well, a man and his two dogs are safe after a very close call in a remote Oregon Canyon. The 73 year old was driving in the desert when his Jeep got stuck. When he could not get his Jeep to budge, the man made the decision to leave one of his dogs behind and then hike 14 miles with the other dog to try and find help. Oregon State Police say he was barely conscious when a cyclist found him. It took crews another two days before they could reach the other dog. Heads up for anyone who lives in Northeast Spokane. The city is asking people to not drink the tap water until the system is flush. A commercial hydro seed vehicle used a fire hydrant, they say, and some contamination could have gotten into the system. This could affect people who live north of Wellesley Avenue and east of Market Street. Crews are working to clear out the possible contaminants. We are also expecting an update from the city of Spokane in just about 15 minutes. If you live in this area, you can still take showers and use the water for washing after the city gives the OK to use the water again. The city says you can run the water for five minutes before using it. Well, those bright green scooters and bikes you see zipping around town are leaving a different color behind. The tires can leave a tangle of black streaks on the streaks rather on the pavement. So we want to know what is being done to clean up those marks and who's responsible. So Crem 2's Tim Pham went to find out. Lime scooters are really making their mark on Spokane. In the last three months, they've been checked out more than 300,000 times, but they're also making their mark in another way down here on the sidewalks. You can't miss them. People scooting all over Spokane. A fun way to get from point A to point B, but some people are leaving evidence of their path. Sidewalks all over town have marks like these from the scooters that have been running around town since May. It's exceeding expectations. We're one of the hottest markets that Lyme has right now. Um, Spokane has just embraced it. Users really have. Colin Quinhurst with the city of Spokane says users have logged more than 300,000 miles. It's no wonder these squiggly black lines are all over, and it's one of the reasons why they want riders to stay off the sidewalks. There's a lot of people to watch out for on the sidewalk, and you're just better off um, for everyone's safety to be in the street. The marks come from users burning out or coming to an abrupt stop. But unfortunately, sometimes it is considered vandalism. Watch this video from Portland. It smells like you're burning rubber right now, hard. Clearly, this instance was on purpose. So who's responsible for cleaning it up? If there's graffiti or a bike skid mark. That's the property owner's responsibility. And recognizing that is one other reason why we want people to be riding in the street because that's that's the best place uh, the streets built for that kind of use. A maintenance worker in Kendall Yards told me he's used to cleaning up the markings, but they can be hard to remove. I reached down to Lyme about the track marks and they asked people to report users who vandalize property. Spokane also has Lyme patrols looking out for people not following the rules and making sure users don't leave a trail behind. And if you do have to use the sidewalk at any point, Make sure you're going gentle and slow and taking care of the vehicle and your fellow pedestrians. So the city tells me that since Lime Scooters launched, they've only received 40 complaints and only one of those were about marks left behind by the scooters. Reporting in Spokane, I'm Tim Pham, Krem 2 News.